Just before we start our service and announcements, uh, Catherine would like to have a wee word with the congregation. Which is here. Oh, there she is. Hiya. Um, just quickly, because we're back at Sunday School today again, it's just to remind everybody about how the format of how we're doing it. So again, just when it's time for the kids to go out, parents, you don't need to bring them down anymore. I think they're okay to walk out on their own. If you go down to the hall, go to the far door, get your hands sprayed. You've got um, a seat to sit at. You'll see a wee bag with your name on it, and you sit at that one. And then parents, if you can pick them up from the far door again outside, so if you come down the steps, and then just the first fire door on your left there, if you pick the children up afterwards. Okay, thanks. Okay, good morning again, folks. And uh, the Reverend Paul this morning, as we all know, is preaching in Knock Methodist. But never fear, because Julie's here. Julie's gonna help us out today. But Julie Niels is from Glenburn Methodist Church, and she's here this morning to lead our service. So you've got a very, very warm welcome, Julie. And a warm welcome to Julie's mum as well, who's in the front row here, Elizabeth. Very welcome to you, Elizabeth. And uh, we look forward to what God's put on your heart this morning, Julie. Uh, a big thank you to uh, Paul Mason and the crew that came yesterday to tidy the church up, both inside and outside. Just uh, the church really appreciates what you've done yesterday. Uh, it looks very well from the outside. So when you're leaving the, the service, if you just have a look at the flower bed out the front door, you can see how well it has been done. So big thank you to them people again. Uh, Michael and Claire Anderson are began new parents of a beautiful baby boy. No name as yet. Uh, born yesterday and weighed in at seven pound, uh, 12 ounces. So uh, we just ask you to hold Michael and Claire in your prayers uh, with the new family. And the East Belfast Bible study begins this week. And they will be looking at the book of Jonah. There will be an EBM on Wednesday morning, and then here in Dundown on Wednesday night, 7.30, and then on Thursday night via Zoom. That's the East Belfast Mission Bible study. And next Sunday is a service of Holy Communion, where the Reverend Paul will be back with us again next week. And just a... Uh, one last one, a very, very special birthday. Uh, a young lady had her birthday yesterday. Is Vera Brown here? No, she's not here. Well, uh, I, I was going to give her a bar of chocolate, but I'd keep it. So it's, it's, uh, but we'll, uh, we wish her happy birthdays and keep Vera in our prayers and thoughts too as well. So that's all the announcements, folks. And this young lady beside me here is a bit nervous, but uh, she's been reassured that God's with her and she'll be fine this morning. So we'll put you in a capital hand with Julie. Oh, just one last one. Don't forget about your wee buns and cakes we're supposed to bring in today for to take them around our neighbours. So if you can bring them in next week, we'll deliver them. Can you, can you see me? <laughs> just about. <laughs> Uh, seriously, can you see me? That's okay. I say good things come in small packages. Well, God broke the mold when he made me. Good morning. It is so wonderful to be here. I was saying to George this morning that actually I haven't been to Dundonald in a long, 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 long time. Um, the last time I was... with a children's or a youth event or something. It was a long, 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 long time ago. But I'm delighted to be back, and thank you so much for allowing me to come along and talk to you this morning. Um, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will come Lord Jesus, this morning, come and speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Whatever baggage, whatever hurt we bring this morning, we leave it at your feet. And we come with joy and praise, knowing, God, that you are here among us. You are here with us, guiding us, protecting us, and loving us, Lord. 
we praise you, Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, I was in Craiga last Sunday, and when I asked everybody to stand, I got told off, and I was told that they all just sit. So do we stand to sing this morning? Happy days. So let's stand together and worship God by singing, Jesus is the name we honour. to move this way is that okay as long as I stay like, like like here is that all right how are we this morning are we good yeah so good to see kids out in church this morning I love it it's fantastic well here we need to tell you it was my birthday last week I was 21 <laughs> again my mum will tell you different. She's sitting there going, and then some, Julie. But it was my birthday, and somebody bought me a present. And when I opened the present, I was a wee bit disappointed, because I love getting presents. Hands up, who likes getting presents for their birthday? Well, yeah, yeah I know lots of the adults put their hands up too. I love getting presents for my birthday. And I'm usually always really blessed by everything that I get from people, because people are so, so kind, aren't they? But when I opened this present, I was a wee bit um, disappointed. Can you see that? What is it? A blank bit of paper? Not much of a blessing, really, is it, for a gift? I mean, what, what, what can you do with a blank bit of paper? Draw on it, okay. This is good, this is good, because I need ideas here, because I'm, I'm old and I'm, I'm senile. What? 
write notes to people? What kind of notes could we write to people? Love it. You can come up here and do my children's talk. You are sorted this morning. What? What could we do? Can you think? Oh, could I some shapes? What's your favorite shape? A triangle, I love it. Any other ideas of what we could do? So, sums? Like here, now, I do sums five days a week. I think that's enough. Any other ideas? Well, I'm not very good at those. Were you good at those? Yeah. Over here? Paint on it. Well, it just so happens that somebody else bought me a really good gift these and I love these so I just thought I might be able to put two and two together and do something that can actually open the pen do something that actually might be a blessing to other people it's not better does that look a bit better now a smiley face. Does that look better now? Yeah. Do you think? It got me thinking a wee bit. And it got me thinking that maybe, even though sometimes we get things that, and things that happen to us that maybe aren't the best, like we'll fall over and we'll cut our knee, or we'll bump our head, or somebody's not very nice to us in school, there's always something good that comes out of it. For example, when you fall over and cut your knee, I know my nephew is a little bit accident prone and bumps his head quite a lot, and he's only two. And when he bumps his head, his big sister, who's three, knows that if she runs to the freezer and takes out a wee lollipop, it'll make him feel better, but she always comes back with two for some reason. There's always something good out of something bad, isn't there? And what I want you guys to remember today is we can use that something bad to bless other people. We can use that something that's maybe not that great as a blessing for others. So something that wasn't much use, a piece of paper, suddenly turns into something that we could use for so many different things. Paper airplanes. I could use it as a bookmark in my Bible and then maybe I wouldn't lose my place all the time. Or I could paint on it. But it's important that we pass that blessing on to other people. And that's exactly what you guys have done this morning to me. You've passed on your ideas and you've passed on your blessings. So my prayer for you guys is that as you grow up, the blessings that God gives you, you'll pass them on there to other people. And that no matter what happens to you in life, you'll turn it into something good. Let's just pray together. God, you fill our lives full of blessings. Sometimes they're hard to understand at the beginning, but you always show us the way. I pray, God, that the blessings that you give us will pour out from us to others and that they will see you through us. For it's in your precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, so when I was preparing for this service, Paul, I've known Paul Maxwell for a long, 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 long time. And he sent me a list of songs that you guys have been singing in church. And one of them I've actually never heard before. And I've been listening to it on my phone all week and I love it. And it's I-L-O-V-E-U, can't spell. I-L-O-V-E-U, God. Do you know it? Oh, yes. So you guys are going to come up here. and No, I'm joking. So you guys are going to sing really loud this morning and teach it to me. Are there actions with it? No? Oh, Cheryl knows the actions. So we're going to sing that this morning, and I want to hear your best singing. Would that be okay? Okay. Let's stand together, guys, and let's worship God.
You make the world spin round. You make the sun shine down. The big blue sky, the stars at night, all for me. You make the mountains tall. You make the raindrops fall. The cars and clouds thunder loud, all for me. That's the reason why I sing. I am. Just a wee bit. Um, I'm just going to pray, and then I think our young folks are going to go out to Sunday school. So let's just pray together. Uh, Heavenly Father, just be with our young folk now as they head off to their own Sunday school. And I pray, God, that your blessings would reach them there, and that your message would reach them there also. So just bless them and their Sunday school teachers now. For it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. So just to continue with our worship, folks, we're just going to pray, because um, I'm well aware at the minute that our offerings are not being collected in church, but I still I think it's a very important thing that we dedicate those offerings and gifts to God. So let's just take time to dedicate those now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts um, that are given this morning, and we pray, God, that you would take those and use them for the work of your kingdom here. Uh, for it's in your name I pray. Amen. Our reading this morning, let me just put my glasses on. This is what happens when you start to get old. If I can get them over this Madonna microphone, it's great. Our reading this morning comes from Ruth, chapter 1. Let's hear what God has to say to us this morning. In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came on the land. So a man from Bethlehem, Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, 
taking his wife and two sons with him. The man's name was Elimelech and his wife, Naomi. Their two sons were Malon and Killian. They were from Bethlehem, Bethlehem in the land of Judah. And when they reached Moab, they settled there. Then Elimelech died and Naomi was left with her two sons. The two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Orpah, the other a woman named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Malon and Killian died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. Then Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed the people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So she and her daughters-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to her homeland. With her two daughters-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living, and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back to your mother's homes, and may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. May the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they broke down and wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. But Naomi replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons who could grow up to be your husbands? No, my daughters, return to your parents' homes, for I am too old to marry again. And even if it were possible, would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far, far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. Again, they wept together and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Look, Naomi said to her, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and to go back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. So the two of them continued on their journey. And when they came to Bethlehem, their arrival, is it really Naomi? The woman asked. Don't call me Naomi, she responded. Instead, call me Mara. For the Almighty has made life very bitter for me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such tragedy upon me? So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by her daughter-in-law Ruth, the young Moabite woman. And they arrived in Bethlehem in late spring at the beginning of the barley harvest. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Just before we sing again, let's just take some time and continue our worship in our prayer for others. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little bit of space in throughout our prayers because I'm sure all of us have people on our hearts and our minds right now that need God um, at this time. So I'm just going to leave us some time during prayer to remember those people and to lift them up to God. So let's pray. Abba, Father, we come to you in hard times, God, times that are scary, times that are leaving us fearful even to go out sometimes and wondering what to do next. God, we pray for your healing upon your land, 
for your strength and your comfort. For those of us that have lost people during this horrible, horrible pandemic, for those of us that are watching loved ones who are unwell and friends who are unwell, we know you are a God who heals. We know you are a God who provides. Come, Lord Jesus. We see, God, what is going on in the wider world around us. Hurt, war, famine. And no rest, God. We pray, Lord, again for your presence there. For you are a great big God and you do hold every single one of your children in your hands. Lord, we pray for peace and reconciliation at this time. That your children will know that you're there with them, guiding them, loving them, holding them fast. Lord, we thank you for, for our politicians here in our own land in Northern Ireland. God, they have such a hard job to do and hard decisions to make. And sometimes those decisions aren't always the right ones, or so we think. But we pray for wisdom, and we pray for guidance. And we pray for your courage upon them, God. And we pray your blessing, that they will know your presence and know that the job that they are doing is worthwhile. Father, we bring it back to our congregation and our community here. Lord, we pray that you will just hear what is on our hearts. And as we take time now, God, to pray for those that are on our minds and on our hearts, that you will hear every single prayer prayed. Lord, hear our prayers and answer our prayers. Amen. I love music and I love to sing and this is, what we're going to sing next is one of my all-time favorite hymns because when you think of the words, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. How amazing is that? Every day God's doing something new. So let's stand together again and sing, Great is thy faithfulness.
I'm thinking I might stand up on this step, if you don't mind. Because I'm conscious there's people over here that can't see my wee tiny face. Is that better? Oh, it's the first time in a long time I've actually felt tall. <laughs> a friend of mine told me a story once. Um, she, th- she has two children, two young children. And she left the room for 10 minutes to answer a phone call while the children were sitting drawing pictures on the living room table. When she came back in again, a few minutes later, she froze. Her beautiful cream leather sofa was now various colors of pink, purple, green, red, blue, orange, and all the colors of the rainbow. She quickly made the felt tip pens disappear and set about looking for solutions to how to clean felt tip pen off a leather sofa. I did tell her that she was silly to walk out of a room and leave two toddlers with felt tip pens in the first place, but that didn't go down very well. So isn't Google wonderful? Because straight away, she was on her phone and she was on Google. And she discovered that apparently, if you spray hairspray on a leather sofa, leave it for a few minutes, or a long time in her case, and wipe it afterwards with just a damp cloth, voila, and it worked. Now, you didn't think you'd be coming to church this morning to get cleaning tips as well as a sermon, did you? We like to please, we aim to please. But why did I tell you that story? Well, this morning's theme has all been about turning bitterness into blessings. And when we read about Ruth um, in Ruth chapter 1, That's what happened to Ruth and Naomi. It's a very short book, the book of Ruth. I don't know if you've taken the time to sit and actually read through it, but it has such a profound message throughout it. It's the story of two courageous women who went through an absolute nightmare of a time, but actually ended up making the best out of the hand that life had dealt them. They turned their bitterness into blessings. I'd like to take some time this morning just to unpick these two women for a short while, if you don't mind. Um, And I thought we'd start with Naomi. A lot of us have heard of Naomi whenever we've heard of sermons and talks about Ruth. But she's never really explored that much. She's maybe mentioned as a side, but never really explored that much. Not, well, in any of the sermons that I've heard anyway. But for me, she's a fantastic, fantastic person. She changed her name to Mara, which means bitter. After everything that happened to her, she lost her two sons. She lost her husband. Everything was gone. She felt that God had abandoned her. She felt that God had just forgotten about her. So she thought, well, then I'm just going to change my name from the name I was given. And we look at her as a person who we maybe shouldn't feel sorry for, because this is what happens in life. People die, people move on. But she seems to be having a bit of a moan and a gurn about it. Well, who doesn't in life? Who doesn't have a moan and a gurn about situations that happen to us? But I'm convinced that throughout her heartache, throughout her heartbreak, God is still working. And it starts from the moment Ruth decides that she's not going home. Naomi was adamant that Ruth needed to go home, back to her own family, to marry again, to have another family, to live a life. Because what could Naomi offer? Very little. But in my opinion, and what I feel in my heart, God intervened straight away. And Naomi changed her mind and allowed Ruth to come back to her. God is at work in Naomi from the very beginning. Naomi was blaming God for everything. And let's be honest, folks, who of us hasn't shouted at the big man upstairs once in a while? and said, why is this happening to me? Why are we going through this? What what are you doing about it? But that's okay, because God has big shoulders. And 
the thing that amazes me throughout this whole story of Ruth and Naomi is that no matter how bitter or how hurt or how upset Naomi was, God was working through her and in her and through the situation. In Romans 8, verse 28, we have the verse, all things work together for the good of those who love God and work together for his purpose. All things work together for the good of those who love God and work together for his purpose. Even though Naomi was just struggling with everything, God was still working and using her. And I think Naomi realized this, and that's why she let Ruth come back with her. As we read on in Ruth, we see that that was the right decision to make because Ruth had a purpose. God had a purpose for Ruth, and Naomi was a massive big part of that. If we have a look at Ruth, here was a young woman, not long married. She'd lost her husband, no idea what she was going to do. All she could do was go home to her family as a widow and hope that life would be good to her. But something inside Ruth tells her, no, I'm not leaving Naomi. Maybe it was pity. Maybe she felt sorry for her. And she thought, this poor woman is on her own and needs me. So I'm going to stay with her. I'm going to be there before her. And we read in verse 16 of chapter 1 that Ruth says, don't plead with me to abandon you or return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. That's pretty heavy stuff, folks. It would have been so easy for Ruth just to say, okay, see, you have a nice life and go back home to your own family. But instead, she gave up that chance in order to stay with her mother-in-law. She made a commitment, which is unbelievable. And Naomi must have been flummoxed when she heard those words that come out of Ruth's mouth. What I would do is, I would, I would challenge us to read the book of Ruth. It's only four chapters, but it's four chapters of a, full of a story which can open so many doors for us in our faith. It's the story of just two women going through a journey. But what a journey. Imagine if Ruth hadn't gone home with Naomi and I just just decided, okay, I'm away. Well, the book of Ruth would have been pretty short for one thing. We maybe would have had one chapter in it. But we wouldn't have been able to unpick the story of such a wonderful transformation in people's lives. Ruth came from a place where they worshipped other gods. They worshipped a lot of other gods. But she took a stand and thought, no, I'm done with that. I'm going to follow Naomi, and as a result, she met a wonderful God who showed her what a wonderful life she could have. And it wasn't a mistake. It was the right thing to do. I have two tattoos. When I was, uh, when I hit my 40th birthday, I, I, I got, I, I think that was when my midlife crisis started. And I decided, I, I've been wanting a tattoo for years and years and years and years, and Mom's sitting there cringing because she hates them. But it took me 10 years to work up the courage to get the first one. So on my 30th birthday, I said, I'm going to get a tattoo for my 40th. And I did. I got this one for my 40th birthday. And then I thought, hmm, I quite like another one. So I did. I got another one. But sadly, a number of years ago, we, we lost my father. And Dad's favorite verse in the Bible was Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And I don't know about you, but I love Robins. Because every time, sometimes when I'm struggling with things or I feel that things are difficult, there'll be Robins appear. 
And after my dad passed away, my younger sister was in the back room studying, well, studying, at the table. And she turned around, and on our patio door, to the handle of the door, there was a robin sitting looking in at her. And there's a saying that when a loved one, uh, when you lose a loved one, a robin is near, and it, it makes you feel as if your loved one is there. And I love that. I just think that's so spiritual and so wonderful. So robins mean a great deal to me as well. So I thought I would get a lovely robin. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it from the back? From the back. And I thought I would get Proverbs 3, verse 5, tattooed on my arm. So it was great. I was sitting there. All was lovely. It was wonderful. And all of a sudden, I glanced down and I was like, oh, that says Proverbs 3, 15, not Proverbs 3, verse 5, to which the tattoo artist went, oh, I've put the wrong verse on. Well, it's my fault too. I should have checked. But in actual fact, she did try to fix it, but I love it. Because in actual fact, Proverbs 3, verse 15 is my favorite verse in the Bible. And it says this, Wisdom, she is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with, with her. And in this part of Proverbs, Solomon's talking about wisdom. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. And I've always loved that verse. So I've never changed my gong back and got my tattoo changed because I think it has my dad's favorite verse on it and it has mine. And it wasn't a mistake that that happened. That was meant to happen. And what Ruth did wasn't a mistake and what Naomi did wasn't a mistake. It was a blessing. A blessing for both of them. So what does that mean for us? As I've said, life didn't go the way Naomi and Ruth planned it to. But I'm sure at times life doesn't go the way we, as human beings, want it to either. But what we can hold on to is that God moves through the hard times. He continues to work. He doesn't stop and wait and go, I'll wait till you're feeling a wee bit better. And then we'll continue on. He continues to move steadily through the hard times. It's important that we remember that. It's important that we remember that we continue to trust God and love God and be there with God and walk with him because he's there with us constantly. Secondly, we actually need then to help others. We need to be God's light in this world and God's love in this world and God's blessing in this world. We have to help other people through their difficult moments. Naomi was lost and she was bitter, but God sent her a daughter-in-law who showed her love and loyalty and compassion. And as a result, we see what happens in the end of, of Ruth when Naomi, or Ruth meets Boaz and how, how events unfold there. We can also do that. We can also reach out like Ruth to the lost, to the broken in our community and show them that God's blessing can break through the hard times, can break through the bitterness, that God's love is there for them. And lastly, it's okay to be brave. Ruth made the decision to stay with Naomi. She could have gone home, as I said. But she knew that in some way her mother-in-law needed her. She made the brave decision to be different. I have a confession. I'm a bit of a Disney freak. So sometimes in most of my sermons there will be a Disney reference. I apologize in advance. But one of my favorite Disney movies is a movie called Mulan. And Mulan is about a young woman who lives, is brought up in a society where there's traditions that have to be followed. And she has to do this that way. And she has to prepare herself to meet her husband, a new husband. And she has to do this. And she, ha and she decides, nah, it. not for me. She knows inside of her that she's different, that there's a different path for her. And any of us that have ever seen the, the movie Mulan know that she moves on and she goes in search of what her her calling is of what it is she's meant to do in her life. And as a result, it's wonderful what she does. And as we all know, Disney always ends the happy ever after anyway. But it's the story of how she is so brave 
that she walks out in her family. She takes a step into the unknown. So it's okay to be brave. It's okay to take that step out of your comfort zone to do something small, to do something huge. I never thought in a million years I would be a local preacher, ever. But God has a great sense of humor. God showed me a gift that I never thought I had. I sing, that's what I do. I've always sang in church, I've always sang in the praise band, I've always sung in the choir. I work with children, young people, that's what I've always done. I never preached a sermon before. And then several members of the, con- of the congregation, one after the other over a certain period of time, all said the same thing. Have you ever thought about doing your local preachers? Nope. 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 And then I got thinking, and I got chatting to a, a, a wonderful girl in our congregation, and she said, Julie, how are you going to know what plans God has for you unless, unless you lift the veil a wee bit and take a peep? And that hit me like a ton of bricks. And as a result, here I am today. It's okay to be brave. The decisions that we make can have such an impact on other people. What have we been avoiding? What have we been holding back on? If we take that step, if we do decide to be brave and make that decision, we witness the joys of God's blessings. Things may not always go exactly the way we plan, step by step, but God will lead us on that curvy path. He'll be there with us. But God's blessings will lead to something amazing. Let us pray. I wonder if Naomi had a song, would it be something like this? Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where your streams of abundance flow blessed be your name and blessed be your name when i'm found in the desert place though i walk through the wilderness blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Amen. I thought this morning, I hope you don't mind and you'll kind of run with me, I thought this morning it would be very fitting to leave you with the blessing. So I'm hoping that it works. Uh, And I found this on YouTube and over the pandemic, this has been played quite a few times, this song, and it's called The Blessing. 
And this, this version is sung by all the churches all around the UK. So instead of singing our normal hymn to end our service, I'm going to end it with a blessing to you. Manna rain down from heaven. This isn't second guessing. We know that we are protected. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message. Grace and favors in your nature, in your essence. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and the children and the children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand. Children, and the children, and the children.
Amen. Folks, apologies for going on a wee bit longer this morning, but I pray that God has blessed you this morning. Um, let us now bless each other with the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a wonderful day.